Midjourney is incredible, but are you getting the most out of the AI platform? Here are my 10 tips for getting the most out of Midjourney. So with Midjourney, it's a Discord server. When you go on there, you've got all of the info, the support, the rooms, and you'll have your DM thread where you can request images. If you're like me, you need a bit more organization. So what you can do is create your own server, and then what you do is you invite the Midjourney bot to your server. Here we go. And on here, you can create your very own channels. So for example, if you wanted one for your book covers, and then if you were working on a sports related coloring book. Now everything is really nicely organized and you can still do all of the prompts and requests in here like you normally would. The next tip is quite a simple one, but it is really, really useful. And that is changing the aspect ratio. All you need to do at the end of your prompt is put dash dash AR followed by the canvas size and mid journey will create that size for you. As you can see, these have come out really nice. The usual output is one by one if you don't put in dash dash AR, but you can select an AR that you like. So these are landscape, these are 20 by five, which is the same as four by one. Yeah, they're four times the width and one times the height. So these have kind of come out like banners, which are really nice. And what this allows you to do, if you want to create a coloring book, which is longer than it is wider, you can put in the correct aspect ratio for the pictures. The third tip is using images as a prompt. So all you need to do for this is upload an image to Midjourney and then use the URL as part of your prompt. That way the image forms part of the prompt. So this won't remix the image, but what it will do is it will use the image as a base along with the prompting terms. This can be really useful. So you can test and learn with this. You can use images as references and it can just give you some different results. So next, you can actually combine images. The results of these are often weird, wonderful, fantastical, but it's a really fun thing to try. After you put your slash, it is then the blend option. And so here, we're gonna take Donald Trump and a robot and see how that comes out. And this is Donald Trump as a robot. <laughs> next is Niji mode. So this is on the settings and it is an anime specific mode within Midjourney. What it does is the prompt then focuses on anime specific elements. And this is really good for anime, for cartoons and for kids content as well. All you need to do is go in the settings or just do slash Niji. The next tip is remixing images. So all you need to do is do your slash remix in the prompt box. So if we go to an image we created earlier, such as this one, with the remix mode on, it uses this image as a base, but it allows you to add extra elements in for the remix prompt. So it won't come out perfect, but for example, this robot, we can request it in a different position. Now, it's, this is not a perfect 3D model, for example, for this robot. So it's not like we can just take the arms and move them. It's going to use similar prompts, similar sources, but the outcome will be slightly different. So we've, we've done the remix on this top left image. We've requested sunglasses to be added and let's see how it turns out. Another quick win is the no command. So all you need to do with this one is do dash dash no in your prompt. What that's going to do is let Midjourney know that you don't want that in your image. So for example, if you're doing a coloring book, but you want no color, or you want no shading. If you do dash dash, no color, dash dash, no shading, you're at least telling Midjourney what you do and what you don't want. And the more information you can give Midjourney, the better the output should be. The next tip is super simple, but it's quite a useful one. So everything that you create goes onto your Midjourney profile. Now, if you want to delete something, all you need to do is click the add reaction and click the X that will tell Midjourney that you want to delete that item. That now won't show on your Midjourney profile and other people won't be able to view it. If you are really particular about making sure something doesn't leak out there on the web, you could create an image 
download it and then delete it if you really wanted to. The next tip can really take you to a new level of control with Midjourney, and that is text weight. So if you add a prompt, you can actually tell Midjourney how important each element of that prompt is. So for example, if you wanted a dog and a cat on a beach eating ice cream, you can tell Midjourney what the most important aspect is, and that can really help give you the results that you want. All you need to do is add colon colon and a number after that part of the prompt. That will tell Midjourney the importance of that part of the text. One is the default number, so if you want to go more important, you can put two or three. My 10th and final tip for you is that you can actually use emojis as prompts. This is a really fun way to talk to Midjourney and it can give you some lovely, unique results that potentially your descriptions wouldn't have got. So test this out and have some fun. Like here, for example, I have done the dog emoji with a rocket. Let's see what it creates. <laughs> so as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's really fun. So it's something that you can experiment with. You can also add emojis in with text commands. Perhaps you could utilize the emojis within a remix as well. That might give you some interesting results. I hope that these 10 tips or 10 hacks have really helped to up your mid-journey game. These aren't all of the tips out there, of course, but these 10 have really, really helped me take my mid-journey game to another level. If you've got any other tips, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.